I found a love for me Well darling just dive right in and Follow my lead Well I found a girl Beautiful and sweet Well I never knew you were the someone waiting for me just kids when we fell in love Not knowing what it was I will not give you up this time well, Darling, just kiss me slow Your heart is all I own And in your eyes you're holding mine When you said you loved a mess I whispered underneath my breath But you heard it Darling, you look perfect tonight Well, I found a man Stronger than anyone I know Shares my dreams I hope that someday We'll share our home I found love To carry more than just my secrets To carry love To carry children of our own We are still kids but we're so in love Fighting against all odds I know we'll be alright this time Darling, just hold my hand Be your girl, you'll be my man And I see my future in your eyes Well, baby, I Dancing in the dark with you between my arms Barefoot on the grass While listening to our favorite song When I saw you in that dress Looking so beautiful I don't deserve this Darling, you look perfect Stacy, uh, with all the excitement and everything that's going on, I'm at a loss of words right now, but I'm gonna get it together. I just wanna say I love you, and I wouldn't go on this journey with nobody else. You're my best friend, I love you to death. Let's do it, Smith Firm. Hey boo, I can't wait to see you today. Can't wait to walk down the aisle and spend the rest of my life with you. I'm excited. Smith Farm forever. <laughs> I love I love you. I do love you. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> sometimes. Only sometimes. <laughs>
Shine and rain is symbolic of what love is, isn't it? That sometimes love would find itself in sunshine and in rain. And you know what love does? It sticks and it stays. And that's what we're doing so that we can get this couple hitched. And so we're gathered here in the sight of God and in the sight of you as the witnesses to Mary, Stacy Bennett, and Lindsay Lazar Smith. And we've come to share their joy and we come to ask God to bless them in their new journey together. God gives us the gift of human love and there really is no love without God. You often hear it said that God is love, but the very expression of love itself was first created in the heart and the mind of God. And so whether you believe in God or not, if you believe in love, you believe in God because God is love. And through that love, husbands and wives come to know each other with mutual care and, and companionship. God also gives us not only the gift of human love, but he gives us the gift of joy. And through that joy, Lindsay, and through that joy, Stacy, wives and husbands can share their new lives with, with each other as Jesus shared new wine at the wedding in Cana. 
And so we come really excited because we all love this couple and we all believe in this couple. With our love and with our joy and with our prayers, we support Stacy and Lindsay as they now freely give themselves to each other. Let's pray. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come to celebrate the gift of love. We rejoice that Stacy and Lindsay have chosen to commit themselves to a life of loving faithfulness to one another. We praise you, God, for the way you love and touch our lives with a variety of loving relationships. And we give you thanks that we have experienced your love through the life-giving love of Jesus the Christ and through the care and the affection of other people that you place in our lives. But God, at the same time, we admit that though we have loving relationship in our lives, that sometimes we have failed to be loving. We admit that sometimes we've taken the people in our lives for granted whom we care the most for. And so as we come to witness this bonding, this coming together of Lindsay and of Stacy, we pray that you would use this as an opportunity to renew within us an affectionate spirit, to enrich our lives with the gracious gift of your love. And help us, God, to embrace others with the same love. We ask that our participation in this celebration of love, that our participation in this commitment give us a new joy and help us to see each other and love each other anew. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who gives Stacy to be married to Lindsay? You better stand up and tell me. <laughs> All right then. Lindsay and Stacy, I charge you both as you stand in the presence of God and these witnesses to remember that love, faith, and loyalty alone will avail as a foundation of a happy and enduring home. There's no other human tie that is more sacred than the one that you're now participating in. If you faithfully honor these vows, if you faithfully endeavor to keep these vows and to do the will of God, keeping God as the center of your life, your lives will be full of joy more than you've experienced even before. And, and your home will be a place of peace, not perfect, but peaceful because God is in it and because you love each other. And so we, we charge you that you would take this moment seriously. We charge you that you would embrace and remember this moment whenever you have those rough periods that you're trying to remember and look at each other and say, why did I do that? Remember this day and what you agreed to do. Lindsay, you're entering into a relationship with many privileges, but also many responsibilities. We've had our three marital uh, sessions and we've talked about a lot of stuff. And we ask that you would remember that and take some of those things into your marriage. The woman that you love, Stacy, is, to be out to be, is about to become your wife. And in no other way can she tell the world how she feels about you than her willingness to make her forever with you. Your joys will now be her joys, your sorrow, her sorrow, your people, her people, and your God, her God. And Stacy, you too are entering into a relationship with many privileges and obligations. The man you love, Lindsay, Rick, is about to become your wedded husband. He tells the world not only of his willingness, but of his expressed desire to turn from all others and to turn to you. Your life will be his inspiration and your prayer his tower of strength. And marriage and love is scriptural. We don't just make this up. Yes, it's legal because we have to do some stuff and fill out some paperwork, but marriage was first thought of in the heart of God. There's a scripture, Stacy and Lindsay, that is a basic for love. And that basis for love is found, first of all, in Colossians 2, 12 and 13. This is what it says. It says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion. This is what your marriage will need, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, with patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord gave you. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Even, even if it's not worked through, still figure out how to touch toes before you say goodnight. The scripture goes on to say, And above all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And then I love this scripture, and I think I may have given it to you in our sessions in 
1 Corinthians 1, 13, this is how it says in the message. It says, if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day. And if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump and it jumps, but I don't love, I ain't nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've got nowhere. And it goes on to say, so no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I'm bankrupt, you're bankrupt, we're bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. Love doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. It does not reveal when others grovel. It does not take pleasure in the flowering. It does rather take pleasure in the flowering of truth. And love puts up with anything. Trust God always. It always looks for the best. It never looks back. And it keeps going to the end. And Paul ends it by saying love never ends. And so you understand that marriage is a partnership between a man and a woman who have fallen in love. But most importantly, you found love because falling in love, you fall in and out of love. We talked a little about that. Some days you'll look at each other and wonder why and you'll stay because you love each other, not because you have all of those little butterflies. Sometimes the butterflies come and I pray to God that they last. You have more butterflies than any other days, but they, times you're gonna look at each other and wonder. But you have a foundation that I believe in as we've sat together and talked. You have a foundation of true love that I believe will endure anything at all. Marriage will require sacrifices from both of you. To fulfill your promises, your love should grow daily. I want you to listen. I want you to talk. I want you to listen. I want you to talk, Lindsay. I want you to talk and listen. I want you to share and I want you to build your dreams together. Never let the love you have for another fade. I want you to spend quality time together. We've talked about some of this. Give each other words of support and encouragement. We've talked about that and I've seen you do it. Surprise each other sometimes with little gifts from time to time. Go for a walk, hold hands, still a kiss when nobody's watching. Date each other over and over again. Read God, God's word together, pray together, worship together. For if you do these things, your love will continue to flourish. And in your darkest hours, tend to one another. Beautiful as you guys are, the most important thing is not that both of you all are cute. At the end of the day, if you don't mind me saying so, love will wipe another person's butt when they're ill. And that's what we want you, and that's what we believe that you have. And so may God's blessings be with you now and forevermore. And before God in this assembly of family and friends, I ask you to affirm your willingness to enter into this marriage. Lindsay, I'll start with you. Will you have Stacy to be your wife? And will you love her faithfully as long as you both shall live? If so, you answer, I will. Stacy, will you have Lindsay to be your husband? And will you love him faithfully as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. To those that are here, family and friends, do you promise to stay out of their business, to stay out of their business, to stay out of their business? And do you also promise to encourage them? In their marriage, do you promise to present an example of what love ought to be and what devotion ought to be? Yes. And you promise to help them build a strong and stable home by praying for them, by, by, by praying for them and by sending them, them back home when they come to you. Yes. But sometimes they will come to you and if you don't have nothing good to say, send them back home. Yes. <laughs> Would you answer by saying, we do? We do. All right. God of love, we ask that you would hear our pledges supporting this union of Lindsay and Stacy. Bless them as they begin their life as husband and wife with faith in you and in each other. May this couple always bear witness to the reality that love we will witness this day through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lindsay and Stacy, I want you to turn to each other and speak the promises that you have come to offer before God and these witnesses. Lindsay, would you look at Stacy and repeat after me? Stacy, I give myself to you to be your husband. I promise to love and sustain you in the covenant of marriage from this day forward, in sickness and in health, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, as long as we both shall live. 
Stacy, repeat after me. Lindsay, I give myself to you. Lindsay, I give myself to you. To be your wife. I promise to love you and sustain you. In the covenant of marriage. In the covenant of marriage. From this day forward. In sickness and in health. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. As long as we both shall live. Don't you just love uh, uh, Stacy's voice? She has a little twain. She has that African, New York, Miami. It all just kind of comes together. Um, we will ask for the rings now. <laughs> you better stop playing like that. <laughs> you have to do this all over again. The wedding, the wedding rings are a symbol of a lasting commitment and a promise of eternal love. And the wedding, wedding ring is placed on the finger that's closest to your heart, which is a place where eternity lasts. Lindsay asks that you would first of all place your ring on Stacy's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and devotion. I pledge to you all that I am and all that I will be. With this ring, I join my life to yours. Stacy, place the ring on Lindsay's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and devotion. As a sign of my love and devotion. This happened during our session together as well. <laughs> I pledge to you all that I am. I pledge to you all that I am. And all that I will be. And all that I will be. With this ring. With this ring. I join my life to yours. I join my life to yours. The couple has also, as you've seen in many weddings, a unity candle, but they've decided to do something, as you also have seen, the sand ceremony. And it's, it's a, in addition to the ring, it, it's, it's a, a symbol of commitment as well. And Stacy and Lindsay are entering into this relationship where they are saying that, you know, we, we, we want to become one. Not one meaning that they lose who they are. But they're saying that we bring our whole selves as much as we know and understand into this marriage. And now we're blending our lives, our dreams, our hopes together. They're saying that we're surrendering to each other, surrendering most importantly to the will of God for their, li for their lives. And so the interesting thing about the sand is that as they will uh, prepare to go and pour the sand, you have one white and one black. They will take the sand and pour it into the middle container, which is larger, and the white and the black will, will merge together. And as much as you can see the separation between the white and the black, it would take the devil in hell to separate it after that because that's how sand is. And what they're saying is that it's going to take the devil in hell to separate us. And we know that the devil has no victory in the lives of the people of God. So Stacy and Lindsay will now go and pour the sand. Well, the goal is that it's all mixed together. You get it. <laughs> if you shake it up a little. And still now, even as it doesn't appear to be mixed, if you attempt to take the black out, you could not, you would not be successful. And so their lives are forever merged. And we're grateful to God for them. For as much as Lindsay and Stacy have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and these witnesses and therefore have pledged their faith one to another have declared the same by joining hands and have sealed their vows with these rings and the pouring of the sand by the authority that is invested in me as minister of the gospel in the state of michigan i do proudly i do proudly declare them to be husband and wife in the name of the father in the name of the son and the holy spirit amen Stacey and Lindsay, you may now take your first kiss of many to come as husband and wife.
Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Lindsay and Stacy Bennett Smith. The stop has cut a couple I've seen in quite some time. They will now prepare to do what is some considered to be the African tradition of jumping the broom. As I've heard someone says, I was married now, and that's what they're saying as they jump this broom. One, two, three, jump. Come on, celebrate them as they exit. directly to my left, but what we're asking, there will be pictures taken before the meal, and the bride and groom is asked that you allow the family on the first rows to go first because they will be participating in the picture ceremony, and so as I do the benediction, then we ask that as the, as the bridal party leaves, then the family will go, and then we will, um, then the rest of you can go. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And God, we thank you for holding back the rain. In Jesus' name, amen. The bridal party and then the family.
so that we can bless the food and we'll get the party started. How about that? All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for being gracious and merciful to us. And thank you for holding back the rain, knowing yes. what we needed you to do and for being faithful enough to do that for us so that this couple could have the type of day, the type of wedding ceremony that they wanted. And so we bless you, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you. And now, God, as we share now in the celebration, we pray that you will continue to be with us. We pray that you would bless this food. We thank you, God, for all the hands that provide it. We thank you for every piece of this food that we would partake in. We ask that you would bless it, that it would nourish and strengthen our bodies in the glorious name of Jesus. And we just pray, God, that uh, as we share together this meal, that we would remember the importance of fellowship. And we pray that as this couple have their first meal together as husband and wife, that it will be, uh, all the meals going forward will be filled with this type of love and celebration. Be with us now. We praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the party, let the party stop. Hey, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for participating in the union of Stacy and Rick, Lindsay. And uh, we thank you for blessing this occasion. And um, we just wish them the best going forward. Uh, I know there's a passage somewhere in the Bible about being equally yoked. If these two are more equally yoked, <laughs> I don't know who would be. They are uh, equally yoked, but maybe not perfectly yoked. And a lot of people think that being yoked, is us back in the Bible, biblical days, yoked would be two oxen together pulling the same weight. Okay, sometimes one may be down, the other be up, but the other one will carry the weight of the other. And that's what marriage is all about. And we love these two, and we actually um, want to just say, um, God bless you, and we wish you the best of everything. And it's not about the material, it's about you two. And we have a great, uh, great marriage. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I just want to thank everybody for coming out to help uh, Lindsay and Stacy celebrate their marriage. Uh, I want to uh, tell you a little story about my son. Uh, when Lindsay was growing up, uh, even before he grew up, uh, the day that I had Lindsay, the nurse brought Lindsay to me and laid him in my, in my arms, and the nurse told me, said, this child is going to be blessed. Lindsay is 35 years old, and in those 35 years, he's never once 
never once giving me a problem. mother would, would love to have. Lindsay, he's very obedient because I used to quote a scripture to him. A disobedient child's days are limited. <laughs> so he would get seemly or unseemly with me. I would quote that scripture to him and we would have shakes with that. So he's grown up in the church. He knows about the church. So my prayer for him and Stacy is to is to get to know God for themselves. Yes. 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 You put God first in everything that you do. Even if it, God will make the crooked way straight. Yes. And if you put him first, I guarantee you, because I'm a living witness, he will bless your every need. Yes. So, and Stacy, yes. I just want to say with Stacy, I'm going to tell you a story about Stacy. Lindsay was the type of person, when he went to college, Lindsay was the type of person, he would bring his friends home, I would feed them, and he would say, uh, Mama, this is, I would just use her name for example, Diane. I could never remember any of the girls' names that he would bring to the house. So I would tell Lindsay, I would say, when you bring these girls to the house, don't introduce them to me because I can't remember their names. So when he brought Stacy to my house, he brought Stacy and he said her name was Stacy. I remembered her name the next time she came. The next time Stacy came to my house, she would come and she would stay in the car. And I would tell Lindsay, oh no, you don't bring her to my house. And she sits in that car, you bring her in. So she started coming in. So we started talking. And when my spirit, I'm the type of person, my spirit tells me when a bad spirit is gonna knock with me. There you go. With this young lady, I knew right then and there, I told Lindsay, I remember her name, that's gonna be your wife. So I love her. She was a daughter to me, a daughter-in-law to me, before they even got married. I claimed her right off the bat. But now it's official. Stacy, welcome to the family. I love you. And if there's anything you need, when your mom's not available, I'm here for you. Thank you.
busy is I honestly, other than probably my parents, I've probably known them the longest of anyone on this planet. Uh, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, it was almost like prophesized. Uh, uh, between Uncle Lindsay, Auntie Gloria, my mom, my dad, they were like, we're going to have kids around the same time, and we're going to raise them like brothers. And that's exactly what they did. So um, for me, I'm beyond ecstatic to be here uh, in celebration of the, uh, the Smith firm. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I actually uh, live in outside of Chicago. So honestly, when, when Stacy and Rick first met, I wasn't around. Um, but like most things, when I'm not around, um, I hear it from the uh, family. So of course, the family was like, mm -hmm. you need this new girlfriend? And I'm like, no. No, <laughs> but of course, when I talked to Rick about it, he gave no answers. <laughs> he was just like, nah, you know, I'm dating this girl, she's nice, she's cool, you know, I like her. And for me, I know he don't speak, so him saying that much spoke boy. <laughs> so, uh, so, I mean, so, but when I met her, I, I knew exactly why he thought she was so special. Um, Stacy, not only are you beautiful on the outside, but you are truly beautiful on the inside. Um, and I know um, not only are you my cousin's biggest fan, but you also have your own accomplishments and goals. And that's what he needs. Yes, yes. Um, he needs somebody not only to be proud of him, but someone he can be proud of. Wow. Um, I mean, and that's why you guys are so great together, because you honestly are each other's best friends. And that's what's going to sustain you throughout everything. So I don't have much to say. I just say I love y'all. Whatever y'all need from me, I'm here. Hey, I wasn't included in this list, but if you see me running around, this is my brother. Um, him and my uncle, if you know my family, are the closest people I have. And so I'm just honored to hear to be here and step in for Stacey because I knew she needed help. <laughs> I was like, Forgive me just enough for the wedding. Just tell me what you need, and I will run around like a crazy person. So I really appreciate everyone that's here. And just from the bottom of their hearts, I want to say thank you for them. Thank you. Simba 
and Timon and Pumbaa are there, and they realize that they are losing their best friend. That's what's happening. I'm not losing my best friend, I'm dating a brother. And I'm super excited to have an older brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Rick, welcome to our family. I just want you to know that it's more than a family. Because it takes a village to raise a child, welcome to our village. <laughs>
have a wonderful day today. Can we say thank you? Thank you for everybody that has taken the night, the whole 818, the whole planning process of 818, because this has been processed, and it's been on the internet for a long time, 818. <laughs> Thank you for everybody that has come, taken the night out to spend with us. We appreciate you all, and just enjoy your night. Thank you. Love you, Hey, move! Let's talk. Hey, ain't no booze with you. <laughs> when your legs don't work like they used to before And I can't sweep you off of your feet Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? Will your eyes still smile from your cheeks? Darling, I will be loving you till we're 70. And baby, my heart could still fall as hard at 23. And I'm thinking about.